Chapter 1. The easiest way to improve your personal and professional life is by developing the right habits. Humans are creatures of habit. Our routines define our character, and they exert an invisible force on our behavior. Whatever we do is a function of our practices. Therefore, the best way to achieve any worthwhile goal is to train ourselves to do the things that will lead to the goal effortlessly. There are seven key areas where we all need to pay attention to become highly effective. Having read this summary, you will learn to Choose to be proactive rather than reactive. Visualize the end of an endeavor before undertaking it. Schedule your priorities instead of prioritizing your schedule. Seek what is beneficial for everyone involved. Try to understand others first so that they can understand you. Work with others to achieve exponential results. Keep an effective system running. Seems pretty easy. However, the hardest and most important part here is to be willing and ready to implement sustainable changes in your life. Real change comes from the inside out. A lot has been written on how to be successful, improve your life, and how to act on it. Going as far back as 1776, Stephen Covey found that fiction can be divided into two major groups, promoting personality ethic and teaching character ethics. The idea behind the personality ethic is that you can learn specific skills that will produce behavioral change. Understanding the intricacies of verbal and nonverbal communication will bring about desirable change. Personality ethic provides a shortcut. The only problem with a shortcut is that it doesn't endure. Sustainable change doesn't come from taking the personality ethic route. Character change is more sustainable than behavioral change. The method of personality ethic is superficial. It is attractive because it provides a quick fix. Working on our character is not easy. It requires identity change. We must adjust our worldview, belief system, and habits to put us on the right course for sustainable success. For example, virtues such as fidelity, integrity, and honesty can only come from within. They aren't techniques to learn. Instead, they are character traits that come from a particular belief system. Having read this summary, you will understand that you can adjust your belief system and develop the habits to make you highly effective. Chapter 2. The journey toward lasting change begins with a change in paradigms. Paradigms are the filter through which we see the world around us. Two people might look at a crowd and see entirely different things. It is a function of the paradigm they use. When your worldview aligns with the basic principles upon which the universe operates, you will be able to navigate life successfully. A person with a negative paradigm will continually see negativity, while a person with a positive one will find comfort even in pain. A paradigm is a pattern we apply to explaining certain phenomena. Our set of paradigms determines our character. Our paradigms can spell the difference between success and failure in business and relationships. A paradigm shift occurs when we begin to question our set behaviors and attitudes and start changing them gradually. For example, Stephen Covey experienced a paradigm shift one Sunday morning in a relatively silent subway car. A man and his children boarded, and the vehicle became noisy immediately. Surprisingly, the man did nothing to control his undisciplined children. Stephen Covey became so irritated by the noise that he asked the father to supervise his children. The man said that they were coming from the hospital where their mother had died. He didn't want to control the children because they were all in shock. This answer switched Stephen Covey's mood from irritation and annoyance to compassion and willingness to help. This is the power of a paradigm. Paradigm shifts are not usually sudden. They require a deliberate attempt to shift from the way we perceive things to developing qualities universally recognized as charitable. Our paradigms, correct or incorrect, are the sources of our attitudes and behaviors, and ultimately, our relationships with others. Stephen R. Covey Chapter 3. We should exercise our capacity for proactivity rather than reaction. Being proactive distinguishes us from other animals who simply respond to external stimuli. The ability to learn and change our natural orientation is one of the blessings of humanity. Other animals simply react based on their genetic programming. They cannot analyze stimulus. Humans, on the other hand, are not slaves to nature. We can respond rather than react to things that happen to us. Unfortunately, many of us still prefer to be reactive rather than proactive. What kind of person do you want to be? Being proactive means that you take responsibility for your actions rather than blame your entire life on the external circumstances. Reactive people have their behavior and emotions dictated by external circumstances and feelings. When someone fails to keep their promise to you, it puts you in a bad mood. When you hail a taxi and someone else jumps in, you curse them. Reactive people also fail to take responsibility when things don't go as planned. They blame other people or external circumstances. 
Proactive people believe their mood or behavior is a function of their internal engineering. Rather than blame others for failure, they seek the way forward. They view life in terms of two concentric circles, circle of concern, circle of influence. The circle of concern is filled with the things we worry about, the bills we need to pay, the loans we need to refund, the weather condition, changing economic status, etc. This circle is quite big. However, inside this circle is a smaller circle called the circle of influence. It contains things we can change or control. Working on the circle of influence makes it expand. When you focus on things you can change, their number increases. Yet, when you focus on something you have little or no control over, it will decrease. Proactivity will make you a highly competent person in the most extenuating circumstances. Austrian neurologist Viktor Frankl was repeatedly imprisoned in German concentration camps during World War II. Despite the torture and deplorable conditions of his prison, he chose to respond rather than react to his circumstances. His whole focus was on his mind since that was the only thing he could control. He thought of a future in a better world. He thought of a happier life and how he would narrate his experiences in the concentration camps to others. Frankl used the small gap between external stimuli and action to find his freedom. He exercised proactivity. The freedom of thought he expressed inspired other prisoners and even some guards. You can challenge yourself to be proactive for 30 days. Choose to take responsibility when you are tempted to blame others for your problem. Focus your energy on seeking out effective solutions rather than playing the blame game. Remember that the real problem is not the problem itself, but how you react to it. Chapter 4. Learn to Create Precise Mental Pictures and Flawless Mission Statements We do things twice. First, we conceive an idea in our minds and then execute it in the real world. Before a house is built, a plan is drawn specifying the number of rooms, layout, size, and other intricate details. You are more prone to mistakes if you set out to erect a building without careful planning. To win, you must visualize what winning means and then implement it. Proper planning is the key to the impeccable execution of any worthwhile goal. Create time for visualization, write down your end goals, and itemize the steps that you would take to reach them. Before you begin, look at the end. Anticipate obstacles and plan solutions ahead of time. You will not lose your way if you ask for directions repeatedly. Do not rush. Plan, prepare, execute. Visualization helps to increase effectiveness. Consider this. If you happen to die today, what would you want people to say at your funeral? Many of us are working efficiently, but not effectively. We are achieving goals that won't matter in the end. There's an old saying that when you do not know where you're going, anywhere else becomes a destination. To be efficient is to do so much in so little time. Without a clear goal in mind, efficiency can become dangerous. You could be making progress, but not in the right direction. Being effective means pursuing things that matter and understanding that everything else is a waste of time and effort. Productive people don't just achieve random goals. They are intentional in the way they live their lives. They can see the big picture. They invest their resources in the real deal. To define your goals in creed, create a personal mission statement. It is a document that clarifies your principles and fundamental values. Your mission statement will guide your actions. Writing a mission statement requires careful consideration. It should not be something done in a hurry, because it will form the foundation of your life. Once you have that sense of mission, you have the essence of your own proactivity. You have the vision and the values which direct your life. Stephen R. Covey Chapter 5 Schedule your priorities and seek outcomes that will be beneficial to everyone. There are so many things that jostle for our attention. If you don't take care, you will sacrifice the things that matter for items that are not important, but appear to need our urgent attention. Time management strategies that many of us apply often make us prioritize our existing schedule. This breeds efficiency rather than effectiveness. Make a habit of scheduling your priorities rather than prioritizing your schedule. Based on urgency and importance, all your activities fall into four categories. Urgent things that are also important. Important things that are not urgent. Urgent things that are not important. Things that are neither important nor urgent. The most important is Category 2. It contains things that determine how our lives turn out in the end. Work on this category. We will find that the urgent things in our lives will lessen. However, first we need to identify things that fall into this category in our lives, and then become intentional about allocating time to these activities. Interactions with other people manifest our interconnectedness. In most situations, we try to have the edge over others when dealing with them. 
We think that someone else has to lose for us to win. This is a wrong paradigm because two persons with a win-lose paradigm might end up with a lose-lose outcome. There is usually enough for everyone's needs in most situations, but not for everyone's greed. When we think win-win, we create positive relationships that will be highly rewarding in the long run. Make sure everyone leaves the negotiating table satisfied. To have a win-win mentality, we need to become sensitive and patient. These qualities will create an atmosphere of mutual trust beneficial to everyone. Beyond business transactions, our relationships could use a win-win mentality. What can you do, for example, to achieve a win-win situation in your relationship with your wife, child, parents, or colleagues? Talk to them about trying out the new agreement. Take action. Chapter 6. We can develop good relationships with others by making deposits in their emotional bank accounts. Goodwill, time, and effort are some of the currencies we spend in our interactions with people. The more of these we put in, the more significant our emotional bank accounts deposits. Each time we do things that hurt our relationships with people, we make withdrawals from this account. Now, the status of our relationships is determined by the emotional account balance. A positive balance indicates a healthy relationship. Consequently, it will be easier to solve potential problems. When there are no deposits in the account, the relationship becomes a disaster waiting to happen. We will have to watch ourselves around these people and be mindful of the things we say to them. A wrong word might cause an eruption. Maintain a positive balance in your emotional bank account by keeping your promises. Empathy and excellent listening skills will help us come up with win-win solutions to situations that need attention. When we engage in acts such as being selfish, not listening with empathy, or breaking our promises, we make withdrawals. Personal integrity is another way to make massive deposits. Avoid gossip as much as you can. Be ready to defend others in their absence. Be loyal in addition to being courteous and sensitive to their needs. The second most important need people have is a need to be understood. When you know others, you will know what to do to keep your balance positive. Doing something you love and assuming it constitutes an emotional bank account is not going to cut it. You have to do something others love, even if you aren't a fan of that thing. The investment is in them and not in the activity. You don't have to be perfect. When you make mistakes, admit them and genuinely apologize. Chapter 7. Do not assume to know what others are going through if you have not taken the time to understand them. How would you feel if the doctor didn't listen to you but handed you some pills after you've said only a few words? Indeed, you would take their recommendations with suspicion. But we do it all the time with others. We hardly listen to understand. We listen to reply. We project our circumstances and thoughts onto them. Empathetic listening is a necessary skill if we want to make a real impact on other people's lives. Empathetic listening requires you to immerse yourself in the person's reference frame and worldview. You need to be able to feel what they feel and think about how they think. Communication experts reveal that the bulk of what we say is hidden in our body language. This means that we need to look at people and listen to the nonverbal cues and sounds they make in addition to the actual words. Sometimes we need to ignore the words. Seek to understand others, then to be understood. When we practice empathetic listening, people will open up to us more and take our advice because they will realize that we are in sync with them. Good listeners usually have healthy relationships, while empathetic listening is a difficult skill to cultivate. It pays enormous dividends. Did you know, communication experts say body language and sounds take up 90% of the things we say. Chapter 8. Being respectful and open are essential ingredients for synergy. When the sum is more than the parts combined, we have synergy. In other words, 1 plus 1 must be more than 2. Differences in our worldviews and orientations make synergy difficult, if not impossible. But if we are willing to admit our differences and recognize individual peculiarity, it may be possible to tap into the power of synergy. We don't have to think in the same way or have the same strengths and weaknesses. Synergy demands that we bring different things to the table, and we should value that. The habits that have been explained so far all build up to the sixth habit mentioned here, taking responsibility listening to others to understand them, valuing others' contribution, and applying it to solve a common problem produces synergy. David Lilienthal was appointed as the head of the Atomic Energy Commission after World War II. He gathered a team of the best minds in the country. Then, Lilienthal told them to take the first few weeks to get to know each other. He came under heavy criticism for doing so. 
His goal was to create an atmosphere of trust. This exercise resulted in a healthy work environment that produced excellent results. We must go into our interactions with others with pure motives. The outcome may be beyond our control, but we must remain optimistic and open. Open-mindedness is essential to achieving synergy. We can find it in our relationships with the people we don't get along with if we combine self-confidence, open mind, and analyze their views objectively. Chapter 9. Take time out to sharpen your physical, spiritual, mental, and social life to remain highly effective. To sustain our effectiveness, we must take time out to recharge our batteries. It is like sharpening the saw. When lumberjacks cut down trees, they take time to sharpen the saw to stay effective. The time spent is never wasted time. It is a worthwhile investment. The lumberjack who does not stop to sharpen his saw will not cut down more trees than the one who did. There are four dimensions to our lives as humans which need to be kept sharp. Physical, spiritual, mental, and social, emotional. Physically, we need to mind what we eat, engage in regular exercises, and allow only a healthy dose of stress in our lives. Spiritually, mindfulness exercises, prayer, reflecting on our values, mission statement, and principles, checking our set of paradigms are essential practices. Mentally, we need to engage in our hobbies more and read good books. Cut down the time we spend watching TV and create something worthwhile. Journaling, writing poems, or letters are some examples. We can also be involved in planning and organizing events to keep our minds active. Socially, we can make efforts to build healthy relationships, participate in activities that involve other people and show genuine love to them. Make attempts to live peaceably with everyone. Have a pleasant charm. Take time to reflect and renew your strength. Evaluating your performance helps you see the things you need to work on clearly. Conclusion The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is believed to be one of the most influential nonfiction books of the 20th century. Stephen Covey believes that there are essential habits that everyone can adopt to improve their lives significantly. They are, number one, being proactive. Number two, starting with the end in mind. Number three, scheduling your priorities. Number four, thinking win-win. Number five, seeking first to understand, then to be understood. Number six, synergizing. Number seven, sharpening the saw. How about today? Can we make use of these habits in the 21st century? For sure, if we want to pursue being highly effective in our lives, jobs, and relationships, cultivating values, showing empathy for others, and not dispersing our energy over insignificant matters will definitely make your life more wholesome. However, the new era calls for new habits. Among these are resilience, flexibility, and critical thinking. We need to learn to tolerate circumstances, perceive them as the natural way of things, and be willing to take risks. Higher maneuverability means that you are more likely to get the edge of any situation. The environments are changing, and the truth is that they have always been changing. The matter is that today, with all the advanced technology, we can observe these changes directly and with more scrutiny. Change is what underlies our entire existence and, to a large extent, propels it. And here is the catch associated with technology and the Internet in particular. The access to information and its influx can be a dangerous thing if we treat it uncritically. Resilience, flexibility, and critical thinking thus may be a starter subset for the highly efficient person of the 21st century. Try this. Providing emotional support for others might sound easy but requires knowledge, practice, and genuine desire to help. Show up when they need you. Sometimes just being there, silently, means great support. Always say thank you to recognize someone's efforts. It will make unconfident people think bigger of themselves. See them. Here, consider being an empathetic listener who asks questions about what bothers the other person rather than rambling about your experiences.